my name is Ron Davis. I'm uh, author, columnist, and associate editor of BMW Owners News, the magazine for BMW Motorcycle Owners of America. And I've been asked to say a few words on video about the Climb Cryos Pro. I wrote a story about this when I first got it last winter, just some first impressions, and now I've had a chance to use the helmet on and off-road a little bit this summer and I'm ready to make a few more comments about it. The first thing that occurs to anybody when they pick up this helmet is how light it is. It's about three pounds, which is the lightest full-face helmet I've ever had, and I've used helmets from Nolan and, and Showy. And there are a couple of reasons why it's so light, one being that it has a carbon fiber blade shell. Another thing that makes it lighter, I think, is, I don't know if you can see it, but there are some still pictures which show it also, is the liner inside is not your usual polystyrene liner that most other helmet manufacturers use to absorb impact. This uses something called choroid, and it's a kind of a honeycomb polycarbonate liner which crushes on impact and actually absorbs, uh, reportedly anyway, reabsorbs more of an impact than the polystyrene liner does. And that also makes the helmet lighter. It's the same uh, liner that's used on uh, F1 driver helmets and uh, fighter pilot helmets and some bicycle helmets are using it now. I really think that's uh, a, a coming thing and this more than exceeds safety uh, regulations for helmets right now and I think it anticipates the raising of those standards later on. So it's a light helmet. One of the consequences of being a lighter helmet I think and maybe also this special liner is it is a little noisy I've found for wind noise. I would compare it maybe to one of the lower end flip up helmets as far as noise. Maybe the liner contributes to this. However I use earplugs so it's not that big of a concern to me but it's something to think about. Being a little bit lighter it might be a little more reactive to wind. Uh, I have a small windshield on the bike I've been using this with and I haven't noticed the wind pulling on the peak at all because there are big vents right in the in the peak here. However when I was riding one day and there was a strong side wind I noticed it was kind of pulling this way and maybe being a little bit heavier it would have more resistance to that. So that's something to think about. Some things I really like about the, ha uh, the helmet other than its weight is this visor. The Cryos comes with two visors, a perfectly clear one and a polychromatic transitions lens. Some people may not be fond of those, but I love this transition lens. I haven't had any problems going in and out of shadows of it being too dark in its, in its full darkest shade. And as far as changing with the conditions, it takes a minute or less for this lens to go from perfectly clear to its darkest setting. So it's just so convenient and being a glasses wearer, you don't have to switch between sunglasses and regular glasses to compensate for the sun. There has been some discussion that when you're wearing this with the face shield up, sun comes through in these ports here and so when you pull it back down you get some black splotches. That's true, it does happen, but it takes less, once you pull the face shield down it takes less than a minute for those to dis disappear and for the face shield to become uh, uniformly shaded. So to me that's not a, a concern either. Another thing I, I like about the helmet is this is another thing that makes it kind of revolutionary and that's this fidlock clasp. Instead of a D-ring, this just clips in just like that. And it uses a magnet to pull itself together, but once it's clipped in, it's not coming apart. The only way to release it is to pull this red tab. And I found that it took a while to get used to that, but I've developed a few tricks to get it on and it only takes a second. It's just as convenient, if not more so, than uh, D-rings. Inside of the helmet is quite plush. I found it very comfortable. It's, I get this helmet in a medium and I find it comparable to a medium in a Shoei or an Arai. It fits me just fine. As far as ventilation, I've been using it lately in some hot weather. So I've been able to kind of judge how cool it stays. It has massive front 
intake vent, which are, you can really feel the wind coming across your face, and lots of vents to pull that air out. There are four in the back, and venting ports on the front. There is an intake vent on the top of the helmet, which isn't very big, and I really can't say I can feel a lot of hair moving across, not a lot of wind moving across my scalp, and I would feel it if it was coming. I think that could be larger. There's just one setting, open or closed. Incidentally, on a face shield, it does have detents, so you can have the face shield just a little bit open if you want. I think there are two, and then it's totally open. As far as the finish of the helmet, to me it's very attractive. It comes in a number of different designs and solid colors. As far as going on road, usually what I've done is take off the peak. It takes a couple minutes. There are turnbuckles on each side, which you just turn, and you can just then in a, a thumb screw on the top, which you loosen and take off, and then you can remove the peak, or you can remove the face shield also. It's something you could figure out on your own probably, but I would read the directions because this is some kind of polymer, and if you did it wrong, you, you might be able to break it, I'm not sure. But best to read the instructions and it comes off quite easily. On this thumb screw on the top, you want to take care to not cross thread it because again it's polymer and if you, if you screw that up you'd have to get a new part. I've used this helmet both on and off road. I've been doing it a little bit more off road than I used to and I like it because it's uh, comfortable. Uh, it does pretty well in the heat. It has lots of options and of course I love this uh, face shield. It's a little pricey. It's over $700 for this helmet. Any kind of adventure rider or somebody who likes to ride off both on-road and off-road might want to consider taking a look at this. I, I think you'd be happy with it.